Hey y'all, as you can see I'm wearing my crown, um, I'm going to attempt something here that, I'd, uh, you know, uh, this is, this is probably a really bad idea, but I'm already here, so here we go, um, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be vulnerable, um, and talk about, talk about, uh, talk about my life. I'm going to talk, talk about my life a little bit and, uh, where I'm at right now. And, uh, if I don't want to use this, I won't use it. Or if I, if I do, maybe I'll put it on my cringe channel, uh, Joe person. Uh, we'll see. I guess, you know, if you're watching this, you'll know where I decided to, to post it. So, um, I beg for your indulgence because I'm, I'm not, I don't have anything prepared. I just felt the need to sort of, uh, not vent. I don't, I don't, I really don't believe in venting. Uh, and by the way, this crown is meant ironically in case you were uh, unaware, in case you couldn't have guessed that. <laughs> I was in <laughs> Burger King earlier and I thought, hey, I'll snatch that crown for this video that I'm thinking about doing, because uh, it would be perfect. Um, and here I am. So, the last 10 years, have been, have not been easy for me, I wouldn't say. Um, the last 10 years have been somewhat of a disappointment. Um, I would say that um, where I was 10 years ago and where I am now, uh, is, well, I'm, I'm not right, right now I'm not where I thought I would be. If I thought about where I would be now, 10 years ago, or say, let's say 11 or 12 years ago, um, I think the high point for me was, uh, the high point of my, uh, my adult life or my career or whatever, I guess my career, how I, how I, th how I thought it was going to go, uh, was probably between 2010 and 2013. Um, it was, it was in that time period that, uh, and, and here's, here's where things are going to get. Like I, like I said, uh, I'm, this might get too cringy. This might get a little too, uh, I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to render myself, my soul bare, uh, before you. So, uh, um, in some ways I'm, I'm probably going to hold back, frankly, because there's some things that I'm not, I'm not going to tell y'all. You're just going to have to wonder what those are. But, uh, I, um, when I was writing for AlternativeWrite.com, I started writing for them in 2010. Afterwards, I became an editor, and uh, for a time, I was, uh, uh, I, I, I regularly took part in a, uh, uh, in a podcast uh, with Richard Spencer, his, whose name is now one that lives in infamy. And, uh, who, one who I have, you know, my once proximity to him, uh, is, has, you know, has, uh, rendered my own, uh, career, uh, you know, uh, difficult, at least when it comes to prestige type jobs or whatever. But anyway, I really felt during that time period, 2010 
2011, 2012, into 2013. I felt like I had hitched my wagon to this thing, this movement that was exciting to be a part of, and that it was going places. Um, this is how I felt at the time. And um, I felt that I could, um, you know, the, 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 the fact that that uh, Richard Spencer, uh, who is a man of of influence uh, and obviously a man of, of means, uh, you know, had had uh, let me come on board and not just come on board, but be be uh, one of the be an editor, be someone uh, whom he regularly conducted podcasts with along with Colin Liddell, um, I, I sort of thought this is, this, this is, uh, this means, uh, that, that, uh, we're going places together. Like, um, I can, I can hitch my wagon to this alternative right.com thing is going places. And what you have to understand was at the time, um, the, the phrase alternative right or alt right had not assumed the kind of uh, of connotations that it that it has today today where it's it's basically just it basically is just a slur if you say someone's alt right you know calling someone saying that someone is alt right is you know saying that they've gone off the deep end and they're basically undesirable uh and ought to be shunned. Um, that is not the meaning that the phrase had uh, in those days. Of course, it was lesser known, but at the same time, it was drawing a lot of eyes. There were a lot of a lot of readers. There were a lot of people coming on board uh, reading alternative right. Uh, AlternativeRight.com in its initial incarnation, uh, reading CounterCurrents.com, um, uh, reading I don't know there there were there were probably other other sites at the time, other other uh, internet uh, gatherings that that uh, were affiliated with the alternative right or the alt right, and at the time it was a big tent. It was a it was. A, there were a lot of people with a lot of different beliefs and opinions. Now, were there were there people who you would categorize as national socialists or Nazis, uh, uh, as, as the slur goes? <laughs> you know, if we cared about sl about slurs uniformly, then Nazi is 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 actually a slur. But we don't care about slurring the Nazis, so we just call them Nazis. But were there people like that on board yes i mean in amongst the readership yes that was not me that was not at the time i didn't think that was richard spencer um and uh, that was definitely not definitely not colin liddell uh and i don't really know if we had i mean it was that that that, that was sort of like the uh the outer ring of, you know, it was the Daily Stormer, uh, and and of course, the, amongst the readership, there were a lot of people who said, "Oh, this alt right thing, it's soft." There were, you know, there, you're just too soft on uh, on these things that are really important, and we should we should name the J's <laughs> and so forth. Yes, of course, that element was there, but. At the time, it was it was simply a place for people who did not identify as liberal, um, and who would would categorize this, themselves as being on the right, but who but who were not uh, uh, on the right, were uh, not on the establishment right, um, and. 
who who uh, touched the third rail of of the you know the, the sort of things that the establishment right didn't like to talk about, whether it was feminism, the baleful influence of feminism, or whether it was race realism, which is not the same thing as Nazism, uh, or whether it was uh, uh, you know the decline of the West. Um, all, and, and, and all of these kinds of things. There were Catholics, there were Orthodox, uh, there were pagans, and there were probably, like, atheists on board. It was a big tent in those days. Granted, there were some some people who were, like, trying to push the big tent into a certain a certain place, a certain, into a certain categorization. Um, and, and granted they were not kicked out because we were not a movement. Like from my, my point of view, from my perspective, being a big tent meant be actually being a big tent. It meant welcoming people in, even if you didn't agree, even if you, you thought that they were quite off the mark, uh, you know, even if you strongly differed with them in a lot of ways. So I, I was never, I was never sympathetic to National Socialism. Um, but did I have, did I know people who were, and was I friendly with them? Yes, yeah, sure, I was. I was. Do I regret it? No. Because, I, I don't know, like, why, why should I regret, um... Why should I shun someone for having a belief that, that uh, doesn't accord with mine necessarily if we're in the same boat together, you know? And if, generally speaking, they're, they've been nice to me uh, and they, they, generally speaking, are, are seem to be gracious uh, sorts of people. And, and you know, like... Uh, uh, not to not to do this, you know. Think about it if it goes if it went the other way thing, because I know that can get old. Uh, but but do you uh, like if you're if you're a liberal if you're on the left do you shun? Did you shun people when you found out they were communists? No, probably not. If you found out that a friend of yours was, you know, thought thought that the thought thought that the Soviet Union was a good idea but just wasn't implemented correctly or, or I don't know, uh, had communist, communistic ideas, uh, in one sense or another, you know, if you were a liberal, you were, you didn't, you didn't think to yourself, Oh, I've got to keep my distance from, from that kind of person. Um, so if that's not the case, if that's not your credo, if that's not incumbent upon you, if you're a liberal, why should it be incumbent upon me, uh, as a conservative, to shun people who I, whose ideology I don't uh, I, I, I don't agree with, and I might I might even quite strongly disagree with because I've never I've never favored totalitarian. Uh, I, I've I've always been down on totalitarianism, in whatever guise it might have. But, you know, it's dumb if you say we're, like, uh, we're, we're in the same boat. To, if you don't recognize, well, look, we're all in the same boat. They hate us all. And they're going to call us all Nazis. They're, 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 it's going to happen. So, um, anyhow, no, no, no regrets about that whatsoever. So, um... So that was that was a time a time period w when I was uh, I I uh, really was um, uh, you know doing I I, uh, I was I was working I, mean, I actually had a regular job which paid quite well or not not quite well what am I saying <laughs> I've never had a job that's paid quite well but it, but it paid paid well enough. 
And, um, you know, I was also writing for Alternative Right and uh, participating in activities relevant to alt-right stuff. And uh, in December of 2011, I, uh, I was able to, uh, to travel to South Africa uh, on the dime of NPI, Richard Spencer's organization. Uh, his think tank, I guess you would call it, uh, to to visit with the Afrikaner, some of the Afrikaner people, uh, visit Orania in in South Africa, the the Afrikaner sort of mini Afrikaner homeland, so that I could write an article for um, for what Richard Spencer had in mind uh, as a as a uh, print journal called Radix, which never never quite. <laughs> it never, it never really succeeded in the way that uh, that Richard hyped it up, and I came to understand over time that Richard Spencer was not somebody who, uh, well, he was he was somewhat fickle-minded. He was not somebody who was going to, I, I, I you know, again, it's it's uh, it's, it's a matter, it's it's a point of. Uh, of some shame for me that I thought for a time, uh, you know, I'm affiliated with Richard Spencer. Richard Spencer's got clout. Um, you know, I'm not, I don't agree with him on everything, but that doesn't matter to him. It doesn't matter to me. You know, he's like this Nietzschean pagan, uh, <laughs> you know, that that's his, his philosophy. I'm a traditional Catholic. That's my, my take on things, but, um, but he, he liked me at, at the time and, and liked my stuff and liked me enough to, to fund my trip to South Africa to write this article for this journal, which never quite materialized in the form that it was, that it was promised to materialize, but that was a part of, uh, part of the, of, of Richard Spencer's, uh, 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 the, the unfortunate fact that Richard Spencer was was to some degree a flake, or I don't know if I would say a con artist exactly, but I would I would say a flake. I would say he was somebody who uh, didn't really uh, who who was uh, mercurial, who didn't really um, who liked certain people, liked certain ideas at a certain time at a certain place and then decide and then would just decide I'm tired of this. This is over. In fact, he, he even said, uh, at one point around 2012, 2013, you know, this alt right thing has run its course. There's no, there's no reason to refer to the alt, alt alternative right anymore. It's, it's over. We need to move on to a new brand and Colin Liddell and myself, both were saying, no, look, this, this is a brand that it's caught on with a lot of people. But, uh, but Richard eventually pulled the plug on alternativeright.com. I don't mean to, I don't want to rehash all of that. Um, you can find out that information elsewhere. But that happened in, uh, in 2013. Uh, I believe it was the very end of 2013. It was like, it was Christmas 2013. It was the Christmas Day Purge of 2013. Um, gosh, ten years ago, full decade ago, when I was, when that crown, I, I hadn't yet, I had the the crown of infamy had not yet settled on my head, but, uh, but uh, you know, I was work, working my way towards it. So things kind of went downhill after that. Um, as far as influence, as far as people, you know, I, I, I would hear sometimes afterwards if I, it, because alternative right continued to exist in a different form, um, uh, on a different site. Um, and, <clears throat> uh, and I think continued to exercise some influence, but I, I, I think I 
was not aware of just how much influence was lost once, uh, once, uh, you know, Richard Spencer pulled the plug and that, that, uh, that whole, uh, area of influence, whatever it might be, you know, whether Richard was, uh, whether he glue in the glue, glue, whether he glowed in the dark, the whole, that whole, during that whole time going all the way back to, uh, 2010, I don't know, lots of strange stuff, uh, that I, that I, I have a hard time understanding, um, uh, but I'm not, I, I guess I, I won't, I won't go into any of that right now. I won't go into any, into any of the gossipy stuff right now. Um, because I'm, I'm too, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm too classy for that, as you can tell. My classy, my classy Burger King throne of infamy that I'm wearing. Um, but, but I, what, I, what happened sometimes, sometimes after that was people would be like, oh yeah, I remember you. What happened to you? <laughs> like, um, I think there was, it was one year, was it 2015 or 2016? I think it was either 2015 or 2016 when Colin Liddell and myself appeared on Millennial, uh, Millennial, Millennial Woes, uh, Millennial, uh, of course, which is, uh, you know, people, people in the scene know all about the Millennial thing. Um, but I remember we, we, we were on with, uh, with Woes, uh, whom I liked, uh, whose, whose broadcast I, uh, you know, I, I, I admired, uh, because he strived for something that I think I've, that I strive for too, which is, uh, you know, yeah, emotional honesty. It's not like I'm coming, I don't, I don't, I don't like to come around and be all like, in your face with how I'm feeling, but I, I do, I don't want to just go around and act like, uh, like I'm, I'm above all that, you know, and, and, and be all high and mighty. I mean, if, if, if I'm feeling shitty, I'll, I want to, you know, I want to be honest about that. And if I'm feeling sad about something or if, or whatever, I mean, hell, this, that's what this video is, is all about. It's about emotional honesty. Um, so, I like that about woes, um, and uh, I remember, you know, when when we were on with with Millennial Woes, uh, this was during the time when he was still on on YouTube. I remember a lot of people said, "Oh yeah, I remember those guys." <laughs> it's like I haven't gone anywhere. It was a little exasperating. You know, I was like, I, I haven't gone anywhere. I, I haven't, you know, I, I, I was removed from your radar screen, but, but I, I didn't go, I didn't, I didn't leave, uh, and I didn't disappear, you know, apparently I did disappear, but I didn't intend to disappear. I just disappeared from your perception of me. And I know some people uh, you know, stayed with the new site and then started following me on when I start, when I began broadcasting here on, uh, on YouTube, uh, for better or for worse, you know, YouTube being what YouTube is. Um, but things were, things were precipitously in decline when, when the alt-right was maybe at, reaching its its peak as far as influence and power because Richard Spencer was so incredibly wrong about the alt-right having been you know uh, uh, ha having having been uh, a spent force which is what he actually thought back in 2013 he and didn't he didn't even use the, the term anymore uh, he, he, he would just say, uh, 
Vanguard or or Radix. You know, he would never. He wouldn't say alternative right. He wouldn't wouldn't refer to. And he had he was the one who had coined the phrase supposedly, although he he supposedly got it from that uh, Gottlieb guy. I can't remember his full name now. Who was a kind of mentor supposedly to to Richard. Um, but anyway, 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 things, uh, things declined and I was, you know, not really a part, not really as, uh, uh, as entrenched a part of the alt-right scene when the alt-right was really enjoying its time in the sun in 2015 and 2016, you know, the rise of Trump, Brexit passing, um, the sort of things that brought alt right into uh not 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 into the perspective of uh you know normies per se but it, it brought it into the perspective of the press the mainstream press and i remember at first you know uh after trump won especially it was like everyone was saying alt right this alt right that uh and at first I thought this is ex this is exciting, you know. I was a, I've been a part of this, you know, since since it started. Um, so I would actually type alt right into a, a, a search engine just to see what what, what they were saying na next. But soon it just became so so tiring because every time alt right was used, it was used pejoratively. You know, with with uh, it was used as, again in a way that was uh, uh, consonant with it to how you how one would use a slur. In this case, of course, it was an accepted slur. Slurs that are that are uh, uh, there are slurs that are considered unacceptable, and then if you want to, if you want to uh, just. Uh, uh, make make a certain group that you don't like look bad. You then you'll call then 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 a slur is acceptable. It become it is deemed acceptable by uh, by the principalities, powers, thrones, and dominions. Um. So uh, so yeah. Um, and then Charlottesville. Uh, which was ridiculous, which was a farce. I, I think I've, I've spoken on it many times. There's no need to go into it any more uh, than I have. And if you, if you want my take on Charlottesville, I wrote, I wrote a lot of articles about Charlottesville on my Substack page. So, so go to my Substack page and look up Charlottesville. I, I think I wrote like um, maybe up to nine or ten articles about the, the whole event, um, and my experience there and what, what really happened as opposed to what, what, uh, what was talked about as hap as happening. But, uh, so, um, so as a result of, of what, what became of the alt-right, you know, I was, I was, I went by, I was alt-right novelist. Uh, you know, I, I, I hung on to the term because I thought to myself, why should I discard this term just because it's being abused right now? Just because, you know, people are, are saying, are, 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 are heaping, uh, scorn, hate, and derision upon this, this term. Um, you know. I didn't want to just run away. I don't do. I don't. I don't just like stop using a term uh, because bad, because uh, dishonest people are using the term in a dishonest way. Um, but eventually, I guess I did stop using it just because I. I just was like, even the even the people who were in that scene. They, they they didn't call themselves alt right or alternative right anymore. 
So, um, so I didn't see the point in, uh, in, uh, keeping that, that, uh, <clears throat> that title. So I let my, so uh, for, at first, uh, alternative right, uh, alt-right novelist was, altrightnovelist.com was my, uh, my author page. And then I, I just let that, but I, I didn't eventually, I just let that go, uh, fallow or whatever, whatever happens when you stop paying for a site. Um, I just, just let it, let it disappear. Um, never stop writing. You know, I've, between 2010 and now, almost 2024, never, I've never stopped writing, um, never stopped publishing, um, I've written fiction and nonfiction. My fiction was originally published with at, by Greg Johnson at Countercurrents, but due to a bunch of the stupid infighting, getting caught in the crossfire of all, of all the stupid ego-driven infighting uh, that, that took place amongst <laughs> uh, various potentates of... Uh, of the alt-right or now called now dissident right scene. Um, you know, I got caught in the crossfire and, and, and Greg decided, you know, I don't want to publish your, your work anymore. Um, and so I was discontinued there, but, but it was, I was picked up by, uh, by Terror House Press, which is, which now, which published all of the, all of the things that were dropped all of the the works, um, you know, most, maybe most prominently being the, the Columbine Pilgrim, but also Under the Nile, and other things that I wrote, uh, um, uh, anyhow, never stopped writing, um, and you can go to my Amazon page and see the full panoply of my, my writings, and, uh, uh, I've written fiction, I've written non-fiction, uh, social commentary, uh, my, my, my real ambition, I think, is to be a, a, uh, a great fiction writer, um, and, uh, I've continued to, to write fiction, and, you know, have a, have a niche following, but, uh, but I'm not, I'm not, I know, I'm not naive enough to think that, that, uh, people know, know my fiction writing, just, like, I'm not anything close to being a household name, okay? And even amongst people who are, you know, affiliated with the quote-unquote movement, it's like, oh yeah, like, a lot for a lot of them. It's an experience I've had, <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. If, if I get more exposure because of something or other, uh, like when I was on Morgoth's channel, uh, when, when Morgoth interviewed me a couple of times, there are people, be, there'd be people saying, oh yeah, I remember Andy Nowicki. What, whatever became of him? What do you mean what became of me? Whatever became of me? I haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> I'm here. I've always been here. But, uh, Anyhow, that is what it is. I don't want to whine about it. I want to bitch about it. Um, but I didn't know. I didn't think things would take this this kind of turn, honestly. And uh, you know, as the light, the uh, I'm being questioned right now. They're shining a bright light into my eyes. This is it. They're, they're taking me in for interrogation. I'm being, I'm being dragged away by the Stasi, by the, uh, the SBLC Stasi. <laughs> the, uh, the ADL Stasi. Yeah, I mean, and I, like, you type my name in, that's another thing. Whew. Thank you. Thank you for turning it. Not, not not flashing those bright lights into my eyes. Um, that's the thing about you know, like you type in my name in a search engine, 
and uh, you'll find, I, you know, what I found to be the case is, you know, it's not the first thing that comes up, but maybe the fifth or sixth thing that comes up is an is that ADL hit piece uh, that was published in like twenty, I think re, I think right after Charlottesville, maybe it was right before Charlottesville, uh, twenty seventeen or so. Um, and you know lists all these people who are part of the alt right and people people who are part of the alt light. They said back then they, they said, you know, but they're all equally evil. Um, <laughs> and I didn't mind, I didn't mind them being, being, making their list of infamy. Cause what do I care? What do I care what they think of me? Um, they're a deeply disingenuous organization. Uh, you know, I'm proud to, uh, to be somebody whom they whom they hate I'm, I'm proud to be somebody whom they deem to be on the naughty list uh, ditto for the SPLC who seem which seems to have lost some some stature in recent years uh, but anyway um, you know you get canceled just by proxy, more or less. I think I got canceled. I think if I just said what I'd said, wrote the things that I wrote, uh, but was never affiliated with, was never part of Richard Spencer's inner circle, if you will, at one point, you know, for, for a limited length of time, uh, Richard sort of moves on. He's, he's like that. He, he you're, you're, you're with him, you know, you're, you're his, his comrade, you're his buddy for a little while. And then he kind of moves on and, and you're in his rearview mirror. Um, but, but, uh, just because Richard moved on didn't mean that anybody else, that the, 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 the chroniclers of hate, uh, and uh, of, uh, of, uh, problematic people, uh, they didn't move on. They never moved on. The Antifa types, they never moved on. Um, in fact, I had written, I wrote an article about how the Antifa called my job and tried to get me fired, but that article seems to have disappeared as have many other things from, from what was, used to be alternative right now, affirmative right because of, because Colin Liddell is against me now too. (laughs) Colin Liddell thinks, uh, you know, has, has, has gone, gone all uh, MSNBC, you know, uh, uh, neoliberal, uh, you know, uh, 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 saying everything is, is, is part of a Russian plot and, uh, Trump was a Russian agent and, you know, he's actually said these kinds of things. He, he uh, if you doubt me, check out his website. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to direct you to it, but you can find it. Um, so through all this, and I I haven't talked about personal stuff as much, but I, I suffered personally as well. Uh, suffered in my marriage. My marriage ended something I never, never, ever, ever thought would happen. Uh, but it did. And, and now, um, I don't know. Now I am what I am. I am what I am. Uh, I'm, I'm the, I'm the king, the king of nothing, (laughs) the king of nothingness. No, I'm, I'm being overly dramatic right now. I don't, I don't want to be maudlin here, but I have to say that, I mean, we're, we're reaching the fact that we're reaching the end of another year and you know in in a, in a month in a little over a month I'll be turning 53 years old you know there is a certain awareness of of uh, of being past my expiration date and i've just got to say you know things didn't play out the way that i thought they would but um, again, I'm not saying this to wallow in self-pity. I'm not saying this to be maudlin and, 
and to weep and moan and, and, uh, you know, whatever. I'm just trying to be honest. Uh, and honestly, I'm still plugging on because what else can one do? You got to plug on. You got to forge forward. And I am. Um, I've got a new book coming out. It's supposed to come out in January. Uh, it's entitled The Rule of Wrath. It's the sequel to my to my book uh, that was published last year called Muse. And it will be published by Terror House Press, which has published most of my fiction lately, as I said um, earlier. Um, so here I am, you know. I'm still here. Um, I'm going to be around in one way or another. Now, 2024, you know, I'm going to stay the hell out of politics. And I hope nothing, nothing, you know, pushes me into that mess, into that maelstrom. Um, it's not worth it. It's not worth paying attention to. Um, I'm going to make my way through 2024. Uh, you know, self, uh, self-consciously shielding myself from those sorts of influences. I am not going to talk about politics. I am not going to talk about Donald Trump. I'm not going to talk about Joe Biden. I'm not going to talk about Democrats and Republicans. So if you want that, that kind of stuff, there's plenty of places to go for it. It's not going to be where I'm going to go. Because I've, I've come to the conclusion that... It's not worth paying attention to. Um, I hope that we are near the end of this. You know, the, the my last, or in the video that I, re I recorded uh, last night and I posted this morning. I don't know when I'm going to post this. But uh, I, 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 I said uh, the one about being, are we in hell or purgatory? You know, I hope that we're near the end of this, this, uh, this age of, uh, of, uh, man, what do I call it? This, this, this age of unease, this, this age of, of constant, uh, almost inescapable, uh, uh, um, almost inescapable disconsolation, almost inescapable demoralization, uh, where you really honestly feel like, like, uh, like, um, we're f f falling apart. Uh, you know, I, I, I think we need to have this out and it needs to end. It needs to come to an end and we need to move on to the thing that's to the light that's at the end of the tunnel. I'm ready for that to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon, but, uh, but I'm ready. I'm ready for it, for it to end. I, I, I don't, I don't dig being in the midst of all of this. Um, it permeates the, it permeates you know, even if you make a conscious effort to avoid it, it permeates through everything. And you're aware that you're still in it. You're still in it. And when I started, you know, in 2010, 2011, 2012, even into 2013, 2014, it was not, there, there was controversy there. There, there was, you know, people were getting canceled somewhat. 
you know there was there there was the 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 woke thing was 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 around but man things really kicked into high gear in 2015 2016 and uh things have never been the same since then and i'm ready for them uh, I, you know i'm ready for this if this is the new normal you can you can have it i'm ready to move on past the new normal <laughs> that's where i'm at right now gentlemen and a couple of ladies who might be out there that's where i'm at and hopefully you've gotten something from this and it hasn't been totally self-indulgent uh it's a little it's been a little self-indulgent but but uh but I, I felt that it was I felt that it was um worthwhile nevertheless all the same so thanks for watching those of you who do faithfully watch my videos those of you who who uh, even more so who read my Substack page not to make this into an advertisement for myself or anything but Sheesh. that's that's kind of tacky but <laughs> to, to end this whole heartfelt uh uh heartfelt video pour, st pouring out my guts to say hey don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs> don't forget to to look me up on Substack and uh you know buy my books my books are available on Amazon and uh, and also from uh uh terror house press <laughs> you know um the, the ones that i published through terror house press but the rest are all available on amazon uh so not to end on that lame note but just to say thanks to people who who are oh, who have been around and i'm going to continue to be around but i don't know i'm still negotiating how how I'm going to be around because things do need to change. I'm going to need to switch things up a little bit, shake things up a little bit. But that said, I'm not, I don't plan to be going anywhere. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Boy, if you watch this all the way through, <laughs> then, uh, then, uh, then thanks. I salute you. All right. Talk to y'all later. Bye.